Alrighty guys, welcome back. As you probably can tell what this is going to be about by the title. Oh wait, you won't be able to see the title, my head's in the way. Um yeah, you'll be able to see what the title is in a second, guys. I'm about to remove my head. Um so it's gonna say stay the same as my other um showcase thing. So I will remove my head. You probably hear me there and there. I'm gonna make sure the sound's down so it's not it's not too loud so I can actually talk over it. But yeah, um yeah, I think that's it. Now, based on what I've seen, it's only 30 minutes long. So it's not a super long one, um, but it'd be nice to talk about. And maybe I'll talk about afterwards, guys, because it is a main game that I do play on my other channel. So also on that, guys, I will be linking that other channel to this channel so they know where to watch this type of stuff is. So, yeah, on that note, let's get started. Get it out the way, because I have a review to do later today. Finally beaten um, Visions of Mana. Mostly, like 99.9%. .9 There's only one little thing on the game that's killing me. That's it. Just one area, one spot of the game. Once I'm able to do that, I'm 100% in the game. But, yeah, at the moment, guys, I don't really need to worry about doing that. So we'll just get started with this. Enjoy this. And, yeah, um, let's go. Do -do -do, do -do -do. All right, let's go. Welcome to Minecraft Live 2024. We're coming to you from the home of Minecraft here at our office in Stockholm, Sweden. We've got a fun show for you with the latest and greatest things coming to the world of Minecraft. A brand new, never before seen game drop, inside info directly from our team, and a sneak peek into the wider world of Minecraft, including some exclusive insight into our upcoming movie. Everything we'll show you for vanilla Minecraft is coming very soon. In fact, you'll be playing it in the next few months. That's nice to know, guys. I've got some uh, information about the movie. Now, um, normally I would just not force it. I'll just, you know, continue the game. But I think it's best for me to force it so I can talk and move on, even though it'll slow it down a little bit. Not much, but yeah. That's how I'm going to do things, including streams and my main podcast and all that shit. So, uh, even though it will slow it down, it won't slow it down more than about five or ten minutes. So, yeah, let's continue. The community has always been at the heart of Minecraft. Your creativity and passion for 15 years and counting inspires us to create, both inside and outside of our games. Thinking back to those early days, even the official Minecraft game trailer was made by the community. When I first started playing Minecraft in 2010, this wonderful community-made video was one of the first things I ever saw about the game. Whenever I rewatch it, I think back to my first moments playing and how this game has changed. I think she's going back down memory lane, guys. I think I'm getting bored. So many lives, including mine. Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks. With the only limit is your imagination actually guys i was thinking as we're watching this video i think it depends what we're going to be doing if we're doing a major talk i'll pause if i'm just doing some commentary i won't there's no point doing it every five seconds but yeah i think that's how i'm gonna do things so i won't be talking about it now because i don't need to talk about it but let's get let's continue this um we're already two minutes into it so we just got three minutes ago so so far so good imagination let's go wherever you want to go I am Steve. The mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. I'm so pissed off, guys. I won't be able to play Minecraft or at least stream Minecraft for nearly two weeks. Or night, rain or shine. Don't worry, I will, guys. We'll be back soon enough. You'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle. Invent a new machine. Or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends. Build your own little community. Protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft and fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do with no rules to follow. This adventure, it's up to you. 
in general, that's basically it, guys. It's a very, it's a, sand, a big sandbox game, and it's very, it's good at its that core. That really brings back memories. We come so far, and yet Minecraft is still the same game we all love. We have now celebrated Minecraft's 15 year anniversary, and it's been an incredible uh, I don't know, I don't like this first year. Well, I don't, not, 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 not like him, specifically, but... Celebration. And end the cup championship. Looks to you like a hipster person. I knew this in Sweden, so I didn't pop chat. I started projects nearly 14 years ago. At first, I was coding back when Mojang had a small apartment turned office here in Stockholm. Now I'm Mojang's chief creative officer, and I try my best to help all our teams to create the greatest Minecraft experiences. So I got promoted a lot. The world of Minecraft is still growing. I mean, I would love to do this stuff, this stuff guys. I'm just too lazy. For us to explore so many stories and interpretations of the universe. The truth is that you, our community, have been doing this since the beginning. Every player has their own story to tell and their own take of what Minecraft is. We take inspiration from that creativity when we explore new things. Minecraft Dungeons told the story of the Arch Illager, and Minecraft Legends went back in time and let you lead mobs into battle with a piglin invasion. Today, you'll hear about some of the upcoming ways we're telling stories beyond our games and exploring more interpretations of what Minecraft can be. Soon, we'll get to see the world of Minecraft brought to life on the big screen thanks to our upcoming film. Oh, yes, that said, the Batman of the movie. I had the opportunity to travel all the way to New Zealand, New Zealand and shit. finally see the production firsthand. It's no, it's on New Zealand. Interesting. It's growing in entertainment, but at the heart of it all is still the game. The teams working on Minecraft are ambitious and want to create the best tools and technologies that will help us and creators to make more Minecraft stories. Yeah, I like Minecraft, guys. I played a fair bit on my other channel, so... I haven't been there yet, because... Actually, there's a lot of new stuff going up, coming out, guys, for my that channel, so... Be prepared. And the ambition is to continue to drop more feature nuggets more frequently. These more regular updates will replace the yearly summer update that you might be used to. This will also allow us to consider long-term improvements mm. to ensure we can build Minecraft for the long run. When we expand into new areas, our primary creative principle is that it starts with vanilla. Because, just as the trailer you saw, that is what brought us here and it's still our favorite game for 15 years and counting. You can rely on us that our dedication will last another 15 and more. I won't count on it, but we'll see what happens. Should know that I have a creeper cap. Hello everyone, I hope you all are well. As Jens mentioned, we in the core game team are working on drops. And today we are excited to show you two of them that we have been working on. And both of them will release within the next few months. A little bit later in the show, we will, for the first time, show you a completely new drop. Something about her that's Bio. interesting. I don't know what it is. But Maybe she's that, so um, start with our next excited, time. that's probably the word being here. Yeah. ...of two things many of you have been wishing for. It's hardcore mode in Bedrock and bundles. Ooh, hard oh, great. Bundles of bravery. Oh, that reminds me, guys. We should be doing my exper external, uh, external, experimental um, plays. I want to do them like twice a week, but they'll be on, let's say, um, solo game because I can't do them in realms. So I might get back into that is your traditional Minecraft experience, except with one life to live. Yeah, so if you die, you gotta restart. Back that feeling of the first time that you play Minecraft. That's what I want to do, guys. That's really what I want to do. But I don't want to do it as a main realm, because if I do it as a main realm, no one will be able to play it. All the time. And that adds to the level of excitement that you, you have for everything that you do. Yeah, because it means you gotta think. Everything is scarier. Because you can't afford to make any of those mistakes in Java and in Bedrock. We have a very different menu experience for getting into hardcore mode. So in Bedrock, we have this nice little toggle that you flip that says, I want to play this in hardcore mode. But my favorite part is that in the corner where you have your little image of your world that you're about to join, a little outline appears, and then the hardcore heart like starts to pulse there. So you really know that you're going to have a very difficult experience in front of you. Yeah, of course. Make the game a bit more interesting. You get into a routine, 
and you do things on the regular that are just very normal for you. But when you play hardcore mode, you have to break that routine and create an entirely new way to play that is maybe a little bit more risk averse, unless you want to play very often, very short bursts. Um, but your experience is always going to be unique and very different because that one life to live changes the entire way that you play. We're super excited for you to try hardcore mode, and maybe you'll feel a little safer if you're able to bring those extra items with you in the new bundles. Yeah, bundles is what I'm looking forward to because it's going to save me a lot of time, okay? I'm not going to keep running back to home because I keep running out of room. But at least I can put bundles as different we added balls bundles to and shit. People pack more into their inventory. So in old anything. versions of Minecraft, if you were digging a tunnel, you might end up with 64 blocks of cobblestone and it fits into one inventory slot. Today, if you dig that same tunnel, you're going to get a lot of different blocks. Even if it's only 64 blocks in total, they're going to take a lot of inventory slots because they don't stack together. This guy knows what he's talking about. Once you pack those items together, reclaim that space, and have an inventory that feels like it did back in the early days of Minecraft. I mean, can you bring it? When we first came up with the idea for the bundle, we wanted to make sure it was actually going to be useful. So we watched a whole lot of streams of players playing survival Minecraft. Oh! They so I do watch people play. Took a screenshot. Then we went through all these screenshots, and we said, what could this player do if they had a bundle? What we found is that most people would be able to free up eight inventory slots or more. Which gave him a lot of room to carry more You know what guys, so later I might just have to join my, my experimental one fight. The main I don't know what we can do, but... ...is that you can go out for longer. If you're going out on your first adventure, you can pack things into a bundle and have a lot more space in your inventory... Oh shit, it it's gonna save a lot of time guys, I don't have to leave caves every five minutes. There are a lot of creative ways I don't know if you've seen me play guys, but every time I go to a cave I'm leaving in a few friends, minutes. ...dye a bundle in their favourite colour and... Give it to them with their favorite items inside. That's going to be a lot easier, guys. You can do a lot more stuff. Or it could be used in story That's the one thing about caving that kills me. Uh, now with this, we can do whatever we want, fun. guys. We can do whatever we want. We can have a few bundles, and that's it. Oh no, it's all just. We interrupt this Minecraft live broadcast for a special report. There's been a monster sighting. Here's villager number nine. Thanks, number five. Villager number 15 here says there's a monstrous creature right there in those woods. So, number 15, have you ever lied on the news before? What? I'm not lying. I was with my group and the monster and got all of them. They're all gone. Maybe they just don't like you. You know, because of all the lies. What? <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, to put an end to these clear fabrications, we're going to go into the spooky forest and prove there's no monster. All right, let's go. Oh, you're heading into the woods. Very well. But I must warn you. Those who enter there Never return here! <laughs> what? Why not? Oh no, this is just the entrance, darling. The exit's <laughs> over there. That's stupid. Right, come on. Everybody keep your eyes peeled for monsters. Oh my god, the little, um, who's no one? Barbarian. It didn't look like any of those. All right, what did it look like? Uh, I couldn't see it clearly. It was behind a tree. Hmm, convenient. <laughs> hey, wait. Does anyone feel like we're being watched? I hope so. We need the rating. Uh, did anybody hear that? Hear what? The, the creaking. I'd say it was more of a crunching. Hey, wait. Where's village number 31? Is that XP? Ah! The monster got him! Oh, no! It's happening again! Ah! Sorry about that, guys. Some caps took a tumble and they've broken the floor, so I had to clean it up. Unfortunately. Alright, let's get back to it. Buddy's XP. And Emeralds. And sign that says, I'm village number 31. Help me. I'm being attacked by a monster. It's circumstantial at best. Let's move on. Mm, yeah, that, that does make sense. Alright, well, I'm convinced. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh. I thought he said there were monsters. Yeah, yeah where's the monster? Alright, we've been here for a while and we haven't seen any monsters. Yeah, yeah, we should make our way back. Uh, which way was that again? Oh no, we're lost! What? No! Does anyone know the way back? Villager number 47 will know. He's a cartographer. Where's villager number 47? Hey, someone left a map in all this XP. <gasps> Maybe there is a monster. There's no monster. Who said that? Stop! Oh, there is a monster! 
There must be something going on. Tragic chain of events, but it definitely it wasn't, wasn't a monster. Oh well, no. sorry for interrupting the show. Now back to Minecraft Land. That is terrible. All right, I've got a color. It's been a long time since I first announced our Minecraft movie. We've taken our time to assemble an incredible team and to create an original fun film Yeah, I don't know how it would... Universe. From us at Mojang, our partners at Warner Brothers and Legendary, our talented director Jared Hess, and some amazing content creators, we're bringing Minecraft to the big screen in a way you've never seen before. All with the goal of authentically capturing the spirit of Minecraft by working with people who play, love, and care about the game as much as you do. Let's hear from some fellow Minecrafters and take a closer look at how we made this film. Let's do it! And action! I'm Torbe, creative director of entertainment for Moyang. I'm Jared Hess, the director of a Minecraft movie. We're super excited to share some exclusive information about how we made this movie. Man, to be able to celebrate that fun, amazing creative spirit that is Minecraft, it was just like a dream come true. I don't know, I don't know if it's going to be a good movie, guys. What is over a decade ago, we really wanted to honor the world. And then spending like three months in New Zealand on set. We've really enjoyed the journey. What's with New Zealand, guys? Everyone loves going to New Zealand. And we chose live action because it's not something that's been seen before on this scale. Creators have made such amazing stories and short films and content um, in the animation space. And it was like, oh, this is the chance for us doing a film to do something different. And also kind of wish fulfillment, because I always wonder, it's like, what would happen if I would wake up inside the Minecraft world? Like, how, how would I survive and, and, and would I survive at all? The idea of being human beings that are actually going into this cubic <laughs> of the overworld and how those characters are engaging in that space. And it just seemed like so much fun. Everything is cubic, like everything is blocks. We had just an absolutely amazing crew of talented artists. You know, our production designer, Grant Major, he was the production designer for the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. We also are working with Weta, and they all have Oops, their own explain a few things, guys. The game. So when they started designing and drawing, uh, it just really popped. What I like about what you did is, is that the choices you make, they support the story and the character. Part of that is because just like every Minecrafter, every player, they bring their own Brain original story, story to yep. what they're doing. It's very intentional that this movie is called a Minecraft movie as opposed to the Minecraft movie. We have an ensemble of characters. These oh, so there's actually a reason that for it, the name it like that. Interesting. In the of the overworld. And we experience a lot of that through one of our characters named Henry, who's a young man going through a tough time in his life. And, and young he man, he looks like he's a, te he's a young teen. You know, he's maybe 12, 13. Like maybe he's like much older. It's, you know, a young kid I see everyone young, young, young that's younger than me, kids. Kid, so. But that's what he is. He's like a maker and he's a creator. Mm -hmm. Such a big part of Minecraft has been the creative community and modding so we thought that Definitely. the Henry the Henry character could represent the, basically the modder the person who takes the vanilla game and tweaks it and adjusts it and then he comes into the Minecraft world and he meets Steve and Steve knows everything about vanilla Minecraft we've always said that Steve isn't really a character like Steve is what you make him right yeah and 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 we've all embodied Steve and been Steve and done different things so uh, our Steve in this movie is Jack Black. He such a huge fan of the game. After a long day of shooting, he was up until the wee hours of the night playing. And it was so funny because he would show up and be like, oh, dude, 
Pesmo day, we gotta try this thing, dude. You know, some build that he did or something. Okay, so he's actually well, learning the game as he plays it. it. That's actually a good thing. His version of Steve. Because he gets an no idea of the, what it's about. Figuring of crafting, not super fun. When the game came out, the but then again, it is Steve. It is Jack Black. So what happens if I put these things? He's not. A, he's not some tool. So characters come into the world. They don't know the recipes. They don't know what to do. The Jason Momoa character, Garrett, is a guy that was like a world championship video gamer. In the late 1980s, it's actually nice to get some information. Kind of peaked then, but he's still stuck in the past. He's got a little bit of arrested development. He's Just holding on to that former glory. We want to show you a short scene that shows Henry and Garrett and Steve. Steve is kind of demonstrating his skills, and and then Garrett tries to demonstrate his skills. Yeah, and Garrett's the noob. This is a crafting table. Here's how it works. You place these elements in different patterns, and you got yourself a sweet blade. You want to see a <laughs> Actually, it doesn't look too bad now you're looking at it properly. Buckets are useful here. When we were designing crafting and talking about this what they are, what it look like, we we basically started at the crafting table itself. We looked at the crafting table, we looked at the engine. Actually, that's pretty funny, guys. It doesn't look that bad. I mean, the trailer definitely not give this gas this. So obviously that was built I definitely want to hear what people think. Real world crafting table. So we got this hammer and we figured we honor the three to five three grid perfectly and, 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 and thought it would be cool and kind of fun and gratifying to just give it a massive whack and then have things appear. Oh and definitely it gives it a bit more personality. The size of the of the block that you yeah. break itself. Like when Steve holds a block, it's like this big. And there we actually found out that going one meter by one meter which is like you know three feet by three feet is actually too big so we scaled it down and it the scales like See, this is why they say it'll get down guys this, uh, you know, two feet by two i knew it was a decent feet. reason i just didn't know the reason in the background and maybe in the in actually the i kind of like the um the movie it looks a bit more better than i expected yeah but then again it's still got a long way to go we had to honor what you experience in the game but also make it work for human scale for our different characters that are that are you know manipulating the environment and the world and throwing blocks and make it be practical for that but still feel natural and organic to what people experience in the game and, and feel authentic in that way this has been so much fun talking about the movie everything that's gone into making it all of the ideas the point of view and we cannot wait to share this movie with the world yeah that didn't look too bad guys i'll go give it credit I knew there was more to it, I just didn't know what it was. The filmmakers are still hard at work on a Minecraft Obviously. Movie, and collaborating closely with us at Mojang, as well as listening to the community to continue to shape and craft the film in a way that's fresh and new, but still authentic to the spirit of the game. Look for more exciting updates soon. Do you want to adventure through Minecraft biomes in real life? You may have your chance with Minecraft Experience Villager Rescue, our first real-world immersive experience where you'll get to journey through a Minecraft adventure in real life. Let's take a behind-the-scenes look before it debuts in Dallas this October <laughs> and spawning in cities near you in the future. Olivier, please do. The premise of Minecraft Experience. First thing is authenticity. Uh, our goal is to make sure that it is truly authentic for all of you folks. Uh, the second thing is defining a new lens uh, from which you can interact with the game, with the IP, with the brands. This is a story of a village attacked by zombies, and it's your quest to go out and save them. Okay, so normal. We have 17 foot projection walls that we can interact with throughout, which allows us to do things like fight our mobs, chop down trees, Collect those resources. Everything that you do in the game, only this time you've stepped inside it. 
This is an experience where you're gonna see, feel, <clears throat> and hear what it's like to be in Minecraft. Well, I'm a member of Australia, guys. We probably won't see this for years. Worth, and then we'll see where we go. Head to the website and tell us where you want to see the Minecraft experience. And now it's time to reveal our completely new drop. Releasing in a few months. So that's why she was so excited. The team has been really excited about the idea of adding a new biome. And we created one with its own unique mood and identity. A new biome? That is not... It looks the same as most biomes. Just... During daytime, it's quiet. Like, almost serene in the new pale garden. Alright, it's gotta be a catch. Looks like a swamp. While you might feel calm walking around in this forest, there's also an eerie mood. Something isn't quite right. Then, when darkness falls, you indeed feel another side of this place. Like the hanging moss shifts from being pretty to really spooky, and you realize that you're not alone. There's something lurking. In the shadow. Ah, oh, so that's what they were talking about, the village of news. So everything about this biome feels unfamiliar, and this is by design. We want you to feel a bit curious and, and scared, like what is this place? Why is it so different from everything else? What we needed for the biome is to have like a low visibility, and we've created the pale hanging moss for this. This really inhibits like how much you can see and how far you can see, but you can still walk through it. So you're traversing through the through the forest and you're like trying to find everything, but you don't know what will be behind the hanging moss. Yeah, it's it gives you kind of a strange feeling when you enter. It's unnaturally quiet and uh, a feeling of something weird is going on here. I really like the ambiance of the new biome. It invokes really those eerie and spooky feelings. Yes, eerie indeed. And turns out there actually is something lurking in the shadows. Of course there is. The creaking. A creaking? What is it? What the hell is that? It's our first tree-like creature, and it's almost like it's camouflaging in the pale garden. And when it's dark at night, it's kind of hard to see it, except those like elusive eyes. Yeah, and it also interacts with those trees, which is super fun. <coughs> There's a special new block that it has a connection to. When you approach the creaking, you can actually realize that it doesn't take any damage, and when you try to hit it, it points you somewhere in the canopy. That's where basically the creaking heart is, and that's what controls the mob. One of the main themes of the Pill Garden and it, its inhabitants is that it's, there's a lot of contrast from the rest of the world. So when we made the creaking, we also wanted it to be feel unfamiliar and different from other mobs, which is why we made it more asymmetric to really go on this point of like being different from everything else. The creaking doesn't exist on its own. It's more of like a puppet of the new block, the creaking heart. So the creaking heart and its creaking puppet uh, really comes with a new combat uh, challenge or combat mechanic, uh, both in the way that you need to destroy the heart block to actually kill the creaking, and also, of course, that the creaking only moves when you look away. So don't blink. I really like the sandboxiness of the creaking heart. It's if I use silk touch, you obtain it, and then you can place it anywhere you want in the Minecraft world. So if you want to be as evil as the creaking heart itself, you can place it and make your friends really terrified. To embrace the quietness of Minecraft, we added ambient sounds for this biome that only plays during the night, that comes from the blocks that surrounds you. Um, that will make an even more creepier experience for the player. And to do that... Oh no, it sounds more like a Command and Conquer sound. The silence ...and the contrast of the silence and the sounds. So, to make creaking, I gathered a lot of creaky stuff that will make creaky sounds. Obviously, the biggest thing would be to gather <coughs> wood and twigs and stuff like that, dead leaves to get rustling 
and creaking that I also recorded. Salty sticks, the Swedish snack, I think it's Swedish. And one of the biggest part actually of the sound is my table creaking, dragging against the floor and also a chair. Well, you gotta get the sound from somewhere. I also recorded teeth. It sounds a bit like bones, uh, maybe, uh, when when the mob is walking, so it's a what do, what do but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to make the, the bind very grey to give this very eerie feeling, right? Um, and with these grey tones, a very fitting new boot set was going to be a white colored boot set. And this is something that players have wanted for a long time. Yeah, I'm super excited for the pale oak wood set, especially that in a lot of places people paint their fences white, for, for example, for a white picket. Oh, that looks nice. That will be exciting for a lot of players to actually represent themselves. And then we also have like the hanging moss. Uh, and you can bone wheel it, so it's renewable. And so I think like just bringing it as well and maybe put it in a greenhouse where things hang from, from the roof, or like a wild garden, something. Something like that will be really fun to build with it, I think. Yeah, and it's also really unique carpet moss because it also spreads all over the sides of the blocks. So, and that also looks really great. We look for a lot of inspiration. So we have looked at all these kind of different forests all over the world. A tree that stood out was like the, the willow tree, like because it's very hanging. There's a lot of like drapery and it feels uh, very eerie. Then we looked at like Spanish moss. This was like the inspiration for the uh, pale hanging moss that we've used in the biome eventually because this gives this like drapey feeling without being willow mm. trees and it was a little bit more versatile and flexible to use in the biome and could also be used as like building blocks hmm. definitely be nice to give that a shot guys we are super excited to see what you do with these new features and the new game drop we want to create connections between features because the Minecraft world is an ecosystem and we really want it to feel like that. And the Kriegen Heart and its puppet Kriegen uh, really has a new way of creating this kind of connection. So it's going to be really fun to see you all experiencing it. And uh, it's actually coming to Snapshots, Previews and Betas very soon. So soon uh, you can all try it out. All right. Villager number nine here. Sorry for interrupting again, but villager number 15 and I have just escaped from the spooky forest. And I'd just like to state, like I said earlier, that I was right. There is in fact a monster in the woods that looks like wood and sounds like wood. What? That's a lie. You didn't believe that at all. Many didn't believe me. But in my heroic foray into the spooky forest, I, villager number nine, single-handedly discovered the creature that I shall now name the crunching. It's called a creaking. It literally just said its name. Mm. Maybe I should go into monster hunting. I'm clearly very good at it. Villager number nine, monster hunter. Mm. It's got a nice ring to it. Well, sorry to interrupt the show again. Now back to Minecraft. Ah! Oh, Stick around with us for the first ever playthrough of the Pill Garden in our after show, starting in just a few moments. Yeah, guys, we won't be watching that because I'm more into actually doing it, not playing it. Oh, we have to finish. These new game drops can be played in betas and snapshots soon, and will release to everyone in the next few months. We hope you're as excited as us about everything happening in the world of Minecraft. Minecraft wouldn't be what it is today without all of you. From all of us at Mojang Studios, a huge thank you. All right, guys, it looks like it's finished. But that was a bit more interesting than I expected. No more of those mod boats, which is thank God for that. That was a terrible process. Um, let's get my camera back on. So yeah, um, that was a bit more interesting. A bit more information about the Minecraft movie, the new um, what's it called, the creaking, and all that kind of stuff. That new um biome. There's a few things in here to talk about for our next little short video, guys. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um. The movie is a bit, at least they explain themselves a bit more why the movie's a certain way. So that's nice to know. I mean, hopefully they don't, no one really complains too much about it, which, um, you know, me, you know, the internet, they're going to complain. What the internet does these days, I'm not really into that stage. I'll just say how I think and move on. On that note, guys, I'm going to finish it here. I am going to make a, re a video about it and cheers.